All right, well. Yeah, I got to remember to turn the microphone on, right? Let me shut this music down. Welcome, everyone. God bless. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, I got to remember to turn the microphone on, right? Yeah, and that thing. So we don't get an echo. So, um, this is basically just my second uh, night. Haven't been around in a few months. Had a lot of... A lot of... Um, things go wrong and uh, anyways we're all past that for the most part learned a lot um, so let's just um, get right into some of the news here we're gonna go with what I one thing I forgot yesterday to put out here this was from Yahoo News um, what was it uh, 40 people and um, I'm looking right at the darn thing. I don't know, some some uh, school facility, um, Channel 3 News, uh, see, upper, uh, I think it was Philadelphia, coming out the top of my head. Parochium School District cancels classes on Friday. This was like a week and a half. Well, actually, last Friday, so a week. 40 members took the... Uh, took the vaccine and then they called out of school canceled school all 40 of them sick so I haven't heard any updates from that even though it was a week ago um, so in any case how you doing uh, Andrew God bless brother and so I guess we'll just um, go with what I got here. Just not much news. Um, I do, like I said the other night, I wanted to go over and just quickly read, and that's after I do these other stories, quickly read a bunch of headlines about the COVID, and, or at least the vaccine anyway, about the vaccine and the results thus far of the vaccine. Um, it's not like it's fake news. It's all out there. All right, so what do we got first here? We got um, from Israeli 365 News. Apparently, they had a cargo ship uh, hit by an Iranian missile. Yeah, and I guess um, they will be having their Passover this weekend. Um, I don't know if it isn't today uh, a high holiday for them as well. Uh, just thinking maybe yeah so but and the only reason I bring that up I mean I'm not Jewish but uh, I, I definitely you know read the Bible and learn about a lot of uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters you know who are the um, elect uh, of God so um, I definitely want to follow some of the things they got going on over there and it's not good you know, um, with this uh, vaccine, they're going to prevent their citizens from doing many things uh, without having some kind of COVID. And that means certificate of vaccination ID. That's what that means, folks. And so they are. Uh, yeah, at sundown. Yep. Andrew, thank you. Yep. And the Sabbath, you know, too, also. It's the same thing. Begins tonight at sundown. And, and so, let's, um, yeah, anyway, in retaliation, of course, Israel's not going to, you know, do nothing about that. Apparently uh, attacked, uh, right here it says, over a dozen ships uh, with water mines. I don't know how you do that and get a dozen ships to go flow into a mine unless they let the Iranians uh, chase them or something and uh, put the mines down. But in any case, yeah, they, they got their um, their revenge. Yeah, even though, you know, they're at that point just getting revenge. It's, yeah, 
And so I don't know if you've heard about this one, uh, Biden and Harris. Biden, at, at I guess he's at home with his wife, the doctor, and Harris uh, somewhere surrounded by flags and her husband. Uh, there was it's a three minute and forty one second video. Um, I guess I'll play the first two minutes of it. Let me turn the, the volume up for, uh, for you guys can hear that. Uh, where he doesn't, you know, he doesn't mention God at all. He doesn't. <laughs> there's a lot of things he doesn't mention. I don't think he mentions the Israelis either. So uh, let's uh, back that up to the beginning. I haven't listened to the whole thing of Harris, and she's the only one talking. Maybe, you know, if I listen to... Whoa, sorry. I saw a big limb come down in the neighbor's yard. We got like 60 mile per hour winds, man, here. It's uh, pretty going pretty good right now. Hope they don't knock the power out. But here you go. Here's the... Um, this is a video. Uh, you're going to hear the audio, of course. From Biden and his wife. We wish you all a joyous Passover season. As Jewish families across the country and around the world mark this important tradition, we know you're all setting the Seder table with heavy hearts, but also with hope for the year ahead. As we continue working to defeat this pandemic, we continue to confront discrimination and prejudice. As we seek to rebuild from a time of struggle and loss, we need inspiration of the Passover now more than ever. Because at its heart, Passover is a story of overcoming adversity and finding hope, of summoning the resilience and resolve to emerge from a long, dark night to a brighter morning. It's a story of empathy and how our own rights are bound up with the rights of our neighbors. And it's a story of faith that even in the face of oppression, better days lie ahead. This celebration is Jewish, but its message is universal. It resonates from generation to generation. This year, like last, we're still planning virtual celebrations, blessing the matzah and wine over the screen rather than side by side. And you know, there are, there are still some grandparents who haven't been able to embrace their grandchildren since the last Passover. And there are far, far too many empty chairs at our Seder, a solemn reminder of all that we've lost. Just like we remember the plight of the Israelites, the memories of these loved ones will never be far from our hearts. But if we learn anything from the Haggadah, it's that our task isn't to discard painful memories. It's to turn that pain into purpose. You know, as we work uh, to vaccinate the nation, bring our economy back from the brink. Let's hold that lesson close to our hearts. And we can close the Seder by adapting a familiar refrain, not only next year in Jerusalem, but next year in person, next year together. On behalf of our entire family, Hog Shemayach, have a wonderful Passover. Our family likes... Yeah, so <clears throat> there you have it. Have a happy Passover. All right, so... I mean, I can't, I can't even understand some of the times when he's speaking, some of the things that he says. So, you know, with that, um, we'll just go on. I mean, I, he had a one-hour, what, what was it, a one-hour press conference the other day. And um, I don't know, I got like three-quarters of the way through it, and this guy is, he can't remember where he's, what he's talking about. He says the opposite. You know, he talks about the immigrants coming up in the winter and they're cold. And then he talks about them coming up, you know, in the desert, in the heat of the desert. I guess he couldn't make up his mind. So he said both of them. <laughs> Anyways. And so somebody, please tell me, somebody, please tell me how, okay, what, they, they talked about climate or um, natural disasters that that's what that was one of the things that they were fleeing from so can somebody tell me I know they had the two hurricanes when they last year I think it was last year or the year before when they were down there in Central America going up towards Mexico two hurricanes I couldn't believe that they hit the same place 
you know, within a couple days of each other. I think it was a couple days. And I remember that. And I'm saying, you know, Lord, you know, I prayed for them because they're out in the open, apparently. That's the only natural disasters. And it wasn't really a disaster. I don't, not too many things uh, were reported about that. But is there natural disasters in Guatemala and, and places like that? in uh, South America. Um, I Obviously, I don't get their news channel, so maybe something is happening. So if you know anything, let me know, man, because I don't want to, you know, say something that I, I'll, I guess I'll always have to apologize for what I say. But yeah, anyway, so let's um, uh, free thought project. Uh, Biden uh, administration urges SCOTUS to allow cops to warrantlessly raid homes, seize guns of innocent citizens. Yeah, of course. And, you know, he's, you've heard about that the past week or so. They're going to go after the guns now. Now that we had that one Syrian, you know, and you wonder why Trump, you know, told certain countries that they couldn't come in here, no matter what. Just banned them from it. And, of course, you know, Biden uh, well, his executive order, you know, kind of whitewashing that, getting rid of that. So, but anyway, 21 years old, a Syrian. I mean, I'm not somebody call him up. Um, in any case, how did he get an AR-15 with his record? Because he had instances with the law and other people. Anyways, just more reason why they're going to come out with these rules so people can't get any guns or, you know, have to wait a long time for it. Yeah, and I was kind of uh, thinking about buying a shotgun, you know, just to keep it in the house. I could always, you know, do squirrel hunting if it ever came down to having to do that. But uh, they want $800, and states right here, $800 per year just to have a license to have a gun. That's a big chunk, man. People who are living paycheck by paycheck. Uh, anyways, let's go on to uh, this. I normally put first, but obviously I forgot about it. So this is from the Watchers. We, on Friday, we normally do a weekly this uh, report that the Watchers put out. I think they put it out. The weekly volcanic activity report, March 17th to the 23rd. So, because we've been, uh, yeah, there's always... Well, just listen to this, exactly how many are actually going right now. I mean, we should be covered in soot, somebody, somewhere. So, new activity unrest was reported for eight volcanoes from March 7th to the 23rd. During the same period, ongoing activity was reported for 16 volcanoes. Okay? Eight of them, okay, are new, new activity or unrest and 16 ongoing activity. That's a lot of volcanoes. <laughs> We've talked about this before. I remember the one back in the 1800s. Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head now, but it changed the growing season for uh, people in the United States uh, for at least one year, I guess. I don't know. I was reading about the... Uh, the uh, 10 plagues that um, Egypt went through when I was uh, looking up Joshua, you know, seeing how many battles he went to and, and uh, things that were he did. But it was uh, interesting that scientists, you know, come up with a reason why all these things happened. And it was a volcano, they say, that went off in Italy, one of the biggest ones ever recorded, I guess. Um, and they said that all these things could have happened because of this volcano, including the last one that they said that they couldn't prove in the beginning of the show, but came up with a really ridiculous answer for it later. So, you know, about the frogs and the flies that come after the frogs die, you know, the frogs come out of the water because the, you know, rivers and the waters turn red from, you know, algae, uh, volcanic, whatever, ash came down and, uh, fire, um, you know, mingled with with uh, hail and stuff like that. That all happened supposedly from this volcano. Um, 
But the last one, they really, I, I had to turn it off. These people, that was the second time these people were just wrong. You know, there's there's one one group out there that claims that the reason why the firstborn died is because the firstborn actually, there's a status thing that they have in their households where their beds where they sleep is up higher than the rest of them, uh, or at least the rest of the children. And that was one, you know, um, synopsis or whatever you want to call it from some, some other group. And that made more sense anyway because the second one that I heard the other day was that um, because of the, the wheat that they were eating, something was in the wheat. And, but this couldn't, you know, the, first of all, the f firstborn gets to have the, his meal first. And I did not know that. So, I mean, I could see the firstborn eating spoiled wheat or whatever they put in there. Uh, and the other children, I mean, I they didn't talk about any kind of a, um, you know, a plight or pestilence that was keeping that people were starving. They didn't talk about any starvation thing going on during that period. So you would have to have these kids, the ones that are, you know, second born, third born, you would have to have them not eat anything or very little for, you know, nothing to happen to them. So that's the reason that they blamed the uh, <laughs> the oldest, the firstborn, died because of this. Uh, you would have to have the whole society and all the second and third, and whatever born, not eat anything at all or very, very little to where it didn't matter, matter. but they would still be starving. <laughs> Anyways, this goes to show you some of the crazy things, logic out there, and some of the actually, you know, rabbit holes that we go down. So let's get to these last couple of uh, headlines here. So we can go on. This one's from, let's see, World Israel News. Even though everybody knows about this, I'm pretty sure you're all up to date on that Suez Canal thing. Um, so right now, I do have some figures here that I got. There's, it's still stuck. They, they tried like, uh, I don't know, four or five per side uh, tugs. They brought in a bunch of tugs, Egypt did, and they couldn't get it out with these tugs. I mean, they were like, like I said, four or five on each side trying to back this thing up or back it out of it and couldn't do it and I know that they are dredging it around where the ship went into the bank so but in any case um, they said that it still may take a couple days but uh, just to give you an idea what goes on with the Suez Canal I mean these ships are waiting on both ends you know the northern Atlantic and uh, Obviously, south, that would be, is that the South Atlantic? I don't know. So, 50 ships per day. That's about, the, you know, the I guess the best that they can do. Maybe 25 from each side. Uh, I heard that it cost $750,000 to get a ticket to go through the Suez Canal. I guess that's better than all the other gas that you would have to carry in a less load you know, to go around and traverse around all these continents on the coast to get around. That's, that's why they built the canal. And uh, let's see, three to nine billion uh, dollars in goods travel f through the canal each day. That's a lot of money, folks. I heard also that it was a, a Japanese ship uh, with Chinese goods on it. <laughs> I think Tony might have been making a joke, but... Uh, I don't know, folks. All the leaders are in league anyway. That's one thing you need to know. They, all the leaders, the principalities, the powers that be, they all know what's going on. All these wars that we've been fighting uh, are all staged and made up. It's to call the population, just like this, you know, vaccine, COVID shutdown, you know, and the taking down of America, of the biggest global economy in the world um, by far and they need to take it down in order to get their uh, world government 
world religion. The Pope's doing a good job with that. Atlanta man arrested after entering grocery store with six guns and a cache of ammo while wearing body armor. Yeah, that's from the blaze. Yeah, and somebody else said, yeah, these things, <laughs> I know uh, we had some kind of a uh, attack like that early on in Trump's um, administration, uh, but uh, seems like these big things like the 10 dead and, and who knows, numerous wounded from that 21 year old. And then you had the, another thing that happened in, I don't know, or is it Texas? I don't hear too many, too much news about that. But the same week, I believe something happened in Texas. But in any case, somebody said, and I, and I don't doubt it. I mean, they want to get rid of the guns again. There's another push for it. So don't be uh, shocked if you hear about something even more dramatic, multiple, multiple casualties in maybe, you know, one of the next ones. You know, they tried to do things like that to shock us and Sandy Hook and all those other ones, the Columbine, the, the uh, uh, I forget that one, in Vegas. Yeah, big things. So, just, you know, keep your head in a swivel. I mean, we all should know that, you know, the times that we're in, and I guess that's another thing that it is really put out there, that we are to fear each other fear somebody of a different skin and different nationality and and you know be fearful but that's not the kind of you know keeping your head on a swivel i'm talking about it's not no fear involved in it at all because we know what's going to happen we know who's in charge and we know what the end is i know that you know jesus when he came he came here to do a job he did it he paid for it paid the big price paid for our sins and it's coming back he already won. He died on the cross and was resurrected, the first fruit, okay? And that's what's coming very close because the signs are all pointing to it. The prophecies in the Bible are all pointing to it. We could go at any moment. So when you wake up, for those people who are in the nighttime, you wake up in the morning, find maybe your spouse gone. You find other people gone. <laughs> News is, is uh, just blaring when you turn on the TV or with people who are already up. Planes come crashing down. You've seen all the stories about that, right? People are, I don't know if that's truly going to happen. I don't, I, I don't know uh, how the Lord would, would take someone out of an airplane and just let the airplane crash with all the other people. I don't know. I guess they're already doomed because they're not being raptured. But uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, uh, that's just me. That's my personal opinion. Um, in any case, Oregon. We're always talking about Oregon. Oregon health officials monitoring four people. Okay, there with Ebola. So. This is not the first time that we've heard about this, too. There's still, because these people came over from the Congo where that, you know, Ebola is still uh, running rampant there. But how come we don't hear news about that? Why is that? Anyways, I've always talked about the uh, Africa being the Petri dish where we, uh, we you know, well, not we, not me, you know, the people's the powers that be, the evil uh, empire. Uh, likes to um, test their concoctions in Africa. And this is from The Sun, DEFCON. <laughs> Un Kim Young unbraided a catastrophic threat as he secretly prepped nukes, launches missiles, and sells arms to terrorists. Now, <sighs> secretly preps nukes. I mean, Folks, really, I mean, he may have some. He may have put two in the, in the orbit a couple years back, and they're still flying around us over our heads. They're just waiting for us to forget all about it because they may just use one. So all you have to do is drop a nuke over the atmosphere of America and detonate it, and you have an EMP, an electromagnetic 
pulse, which will take out all our electrics. All, you know, so be prepared for that. Have some extra stay. But anyways, if it's so secret, how they know about it, right? Secretly preps nukes. I mean, how they know? Do they have somebody, you know, in, I doubt it because this guy's purged a lot of people, even his own family out from around him anyway. Yeah, and they have been launching missiles. They've launched uh, medium range missiles and long range missiles. And I'm, I'm, you know, thank Japan for having the resilience to not pro be provoked by this because they're dropping it right off the Sea of Japan. And Japan is, is they're uh, protected, not only by us, but they have things too. Yes, they do. So, you know, who knows? I, and there's no way that there's going to be a nuclear war because Jesus won't allow it. Um, you've heard about UFOs, you know, from time to time going over uh, nuclear installations, uh, shutting down or turning on uh, these particular nukes, either uh, shutting down their sequence to fire or starting them up, letting us know that they can control that. But in any case, that's not why I say that. I say that because, you know, in Matthew, what was it, 24? I don't know if it's 26, somewhere around there, where Jesus talks about uh, he's going to cut everything short. Because if he don't, obviously, the you know, all mankind will be wiped out. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have a nuclear exchange on this planet, it's going to be total. That's why, you know, they have that deterrent. Anyways, it would be total and you wouldn't be able to live on the planet. So I think that there will be maybe one, maybe two nukes go off to start a war. But it's not going to be total. So don't worry about that, people. You shouldn't be worried about any of these things. You know, if I say if it happens, you know, just let the thing land on top of my head. I'll be okay. I'm gone out of here. <clears throat> So Alabama, again, Georgia, dig out from tornadoes that left at least six dead. Yeah. We're still following that story. Friday. Begin clean up wreckage after powerful tornadoes ripped through the two states during the night, killing at least six people. It's been on the news all day. Even the local media is showing it, so or the mainstream media. Yeah. Let's pray for those people and uh, hope that they get, uh, you know, a roof over their head and food to eat and, you know, just heal. So I'm, it just feels like everyone is, is constantly, um, yeah, we're healing. We're all healing. This is a, you know, pretty dark time. This is from Faithwire. Nebraska warns parents about inappropriate sex education standards for kids. And it's a good thing they were warned because there's a lot of states that won't tell the parents, okay? Kindergartners, okay, in Nebraska are being educated uh, structures as well as identity and sexuality with kindergartens, okay? Just calling it out, letting you know Nebraska's involved too. Children in kindergarten could soon be learned about the fundamental components of sexual health. Kindergartens, are you serious, man? It's, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, um, Noah, the days of Noah. I believe mostly everything, you know, that Jesus said that you would know that things are, you know, like the days of Noah, that in our time they would be the same. And I can go and we can go and talk about this, this for hours about how that we've already reached that point. Things are everything turning into Sodom and Gomorrah and, and the days of Noah where they just went around and not a care in the world about what, you know. I mean, come on, if you can't notice the, you know, our, our God Almighty waking everyone up with these floods just in the beginning, five years ago, maybe even longer than that that they started. You know, he was warning us, telling us by these floods that he's the one that destroyed the earth with the flood. 
He's going to do it again with fire. But you don't have to be here. You don't have to be here on that last day. That day of wrath that he's going to come. And you go, people will regret it. That's all I can say. Hopefully I won't be here. So. I guess we can end there. I don't know how long I went. Yeah, 30 minutes or so. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sorry about not, um, not answering the chat room in there because I go through the, the uh, articles and I don't really see the chat room anymore. I haven't figured out yet how to use the chat room on YouTube Live. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I just want to say hello, Jody. Hope you're doing okay, Andrew. So with that, folks, I'm going to try to do this as much as I can. At around this time, I think for a while I've been trying to figure out what's the best time. You know, um, didn't want to interrupt some other things. I have dinner and stuff before, you know, six. I, hey, and I didn't want to interrupt Jimmy over at Shepherd's his time, but it seems like he's there all the time, isn't he? He is there. He does. Praise, praise God for him because he does a lot of things over at Shepherds. Yeah. So, um, so that's about what I'm going to try and do. You know, about six, six thirty, maybe even seven. I don't know. <clears throat> Early enough so some people before they go to bed, you know, <laughs> might have time to listen in for a couple. But that's about it. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be here every day because a lot of things happen. I mean, you know, I can go and tell you the story of the past three to six months. But I, I you know, want to leave, let you go on a positive note. Well, I did come out of it alive and I came, you know, he's, he's, he keeps blessing me. Um, I don't know how to put it. And that's the other thing. How do you put it? How do you put into words what you know the Holy Spirit has done in you? I know I know some people are good at it. I'm just I'm better at putting it on paper, but I guess I could put it on paper and then read it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, I thank you guys for showing up. Uh, have a good evening and peace out, man. Uh, if I can figure out how to stop everything. <laughs>